And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Normally, I cover new games. Sometimes I cover old ones. The Mocker here is 16 years old. Now, it's kind of funny. I played the Mocker because everyone told me this was the game. This was one of the definitive Euro games about the German elections. Now, if today, if, if, if I had seen it on the shelf, I might have passed by. The box art doesn't look good. When you set the game up, it looks very Euro-y with lots of cubes. And you know what? Let me show you how the game plays and we'll just go from there. things I want to point out. First of all, this is the German version of Demacher. I do not have the newer English version from Valley Games. Secondly, this is not a how to play video. So I may gloss over things or, you know, reduce things down to simpler forms just because I want to give you an idea of how to play. The idea of this game is at the end of the game, you're trying to have the most votes and you're gonna be getting that through different ways. And there's seven rounds of the game, and in each round, you're going to score one region. There's four boards here that make up a region. So it'll be one, two, three, four. Each time you score a board, you will clear that board and put out, and basically restart. So as soon as board one would be finished, then we would clear it and it would be board five. And then when board two is finished, it would be board six. When board three is finished, it would be board seven. And then after that, the boards start going away. So there's seven rounds. So you'll be getting a lot of votes and those for points over the course of the game. You also get points equal to your party membership up here. And do you match the mandate to the people and media? There's a few other ways to get points also. Now, the whole game has, is all about trying to do everything at once and not really having enough to do that. At the beginning, there's an interesting feature that the game has, is you have these sheets, and you, have, you pick one of these three options at the beginning of the game, and then you pick one of these four options, and each option is going to give you like specific things, like this might give you some media tokens, it might give you votes in a certain uh, region, uh, over here, I'm sorry, here they give you media, here you get, uh, uh, there's just different things that they will give you. And you'll also you'll be using this to make bids to see who goes first in each of the rounds of the game. Each region is given a card. For example, this region here would be Berlin, which is a very big region. And this shows you basically how many points this region is worth if you get a certain number of votes in that region. Now, there are a couple things here in the region. You have a spot down here where this keeps track of your votes. But you also have these party meetings, and these are spots, these are how you get votes. At the end of each round, you're going to be able to change these to votes if you want. And you will change those to vote depending on your favor in the party. Right now, I have a modifier of zero, but if my favor goes up, I could multiply each of these by two or by three. Of course, your favor could go down, which would hurt you too. But not only are you worried about your favor in that region, but you're also looking at the different things that that region stands for. This region is for school reform. It's against the Euro. It's for, uh, I don't know, life, uh, lifesavers. And it's against square tomatoes. I'm not, I don't know what everything here stands for, but the symbols are pretty, are pretty easy to, to see. So I look over here at my policies. You'll have policies in front of you. I'm for healthcare. I'm for more police. I'm against the Euro. I'm for nuclear and I'm against square tomatoes. Well, if you remember, there, that region's against square tomatoes and that region's against the Euro. So that's two, basically I'd multiply each of my party tokens by two because I match them in two. Now you can lose one. For example, if I was for the Euro and that region's against the Euro, then I, that would be a negative point in my favor. So each round of the game, players are gonna be doing different things. For one thing, they're able to spend money to do what's called the shadow committee, which will let them put out more votes and maneuver different things. One of the things that can let you do, there's, it can let you make one of the 
the issues in a region worth double to that region. There is also um, ways that when you participate in these shadow committees that two players can form a coalition and then their votes are counted together, which can be very powerful and they'll have to split the points, but at the same time it, will, it can help you win over someone who is stronger. They will let you change these. There's a, a pool over here of letting you change those. Also, being able to control the media in the region. You have these big, big blue cubes, which you can control media, and whoever has the control media will be able to maybe change one of the issues in the region. And as the game goes by, as you're scoring each of these regions, you're going to be looking at this board up here and increasing party membership, but also you're going to be able to take some of these issues and you're going to be able to make those issues national issues, which can score you points at the end of the game if you are working with these national issues. And also your media can go national, which also is worth more points at the end of the game. Again, I'm kind of glossing over everything that you can do, but the, the whole thing is you really can't win every region. So you can work on the current region or you can try to be working ahead. You can always go up to three regions ahead. I can be working on region four and trying to get the votes ready for when that one comes up. But you know, at the same time, you're going to want region. There's dice in the game, which you'll use for party votes sometimes. You can get those because... The different areas will give you money, and the money, you need, you need all kinds of money in this game, but you also have the opportunity to take large donations each turn. Players have these cards where I can take 50,000 in a donation, but then I roll the dice three times and that's my party membership I lose, or I can refuse that and gain party membership because, hey, you know, I'm an honorable man, not taking contributions from the big guy. And so, uh, one last thing I wanna point out, and again, Total overview here, but each turn there's going to be an auction for a poll, and so what happens is you you bid for the poll, and the winner gets the the poll. That's the wrong card. These are the poll cards, and I can look at the poll here, and I say, oh, okay, this poll puts the yellow up by three, blue up by two, red up by one, black down by one, and green down by two. Now I'm the green player, so I say, you know what? I'm not going to publish this poll, and I just roll two dice and add to my party membership. But if I was the yellow player, I'd say, you know what, I am going to publish this poll, and that would put my, one of my things would go up by three in the region of my choice, where the green, I could pick another one to do. So I might make the green one go down two, or maybe I'll say, blue, we're in a coalition, so I'm going to make you go up two also. So there's all different sorts of things that you're doing. Each region takes about... 30, not maybe not 30 minutes, but 20 minutes to handle. So the game can be quite long and the game also escalates. As you can see, I, I know, I knew all the issues in the first region. In the region that's coming up next, I know three out of the four. When we get there, the fourth will be revealed. And here I know two out of the four, there I know one out of the four. So as the game progresses, you'll be changing. A new region will come out where everyone is fresh. No one has any party tokens. No one has any uh, favor up and down. And the issues can be completely different. You can change your own issues. Uh, there's all sorts of things going on in this game. So that's a basic overview. I remember when I first was being shown Demacher and was at a convention and someone sat us down and there was a book and very carefully how to go through the steps. And it's kind of interesting because this was considered a fairly involved game. And it still is a fairly involved game, but I think I've played enough of these fairly involved Euro games that Demacher doesn't even come close to scaring me anymore. Now, winning it is another matter. There's really so many different options. Now, I didn't know anything about the German elections. They are very confusing and foreign to me as an American, although to be fair, our own elections are not very easy to follow. But these are, this is a very different thing. And one of the things about German elections is how important the coalitions are, which is almost a foreign idea to the American, but it really makes for a, a great mechanic. I don't know how well it, it works in real life, but for a game mechanic where we can join together to beat down somebody else, in this election, and then in the next election, you know what, forget it, I'm going to try to do this one on my own. And the, picking your provinces, I think that setup thing in the beginning is so cool, because I can pick you know, where I'm going to go secretly, so you all will basically have a nice starting position over the board, but you've all picked on a piece of paper, and you have a lot of options there. The first time you play Demacher, you will not know what you're doing to well over, well, the game will be over. And then you'll be like, oh, that's for a long game, you know, oh, well, what can you do? But 
give it another try. I mean, it, my second game, I remember it really, I mean, it clicked for me on the first near the end. The second game, it clicked. And then after that, it's like, oh, now do I, I know what to do in this game? Not a clue. I mean, as for strategy and winning. But I do have different strategies you can try. Trying to control the media. Flipping your positions like in real life. You can flip-flop your positions, but it's not so easy. You can really only change one per turn, maybe more if you control the media. Your goal is not so much to change your positions, but to change the people's positions to match your own. This game has a lot more uh, real life stuff in it than you might, might want to know about. And yet it's abstracted down into a board. There's no personalities in the game. There's no like special events. It's, it's just a, a political gaming system. And honestly, it's one of the best political gaming systems that has ever been designed. It's one of the best political games. It is fantastic. Uh, I know it's not for everybody, but if you like Euro games, if you like political games, you owe it to yourself to try this one at least once. It's a hefty game. Three hours probably once you know what you're doing. Four hours in your first game. But when you come out of it, you will feel like you've played a game and you've won even whether you did not get the victory of the game, you've won just for playing it. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. Shut the door! Yeah. Yeah.